Oh, look at all these beautiful colours and textures. Hello and welcome in this exciting episode. I make a jacket. It was supposed to be like an ugly sweater, but then I had to do the fabric the the other way, vertical instead of horizontal. It's anyway. perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So here is the tweed. It's another one of those ugly sweater type situations. I think this is inspired by a Chanel collection, um, the protest one. Anyway, um, I have to cut out the structural layer first. I need two sets. Uh, well, I'll cut out one set of some bits and two sets of some. So um, the ones over on the left are for the lining. So I'll just keep them separate. And the ones here in the center of the screen now, those are for the front and these are for the back. And then we've got the sleeves and the upper sleeves and the under sleeves over there. So I'll set aside the sleeves and the lining bit and we'll just focus on the front sections and the back sections. So I pin the front pieces together and the back pieces. The section on the right of the screen here, it's side back, center back, side back. And the one on the left is just the center front and side front of the left and the right. So now that these are ready, I can, so these are my structural layer and I'm, they're going to be the shell that I'm going to drape my tweed over. So now that these are ready to be used, it is time to get the tweed out again. Oh, and this fabric is called net or netting depending where you live um it might have a different name it's the stuff they make the bottom of the tutus out of not floaty um tulle that they make wedding veils out of and cut it with dull scissors not sharp ones otherwise the edge of it will be really sharp and you'll cut yourself anyway we have the tweed and i really wanted to uh do it this way to go horizontal but there just wasn't enough of it so I'm gonna have to go vertical and unfortunately I bought this on Etsy I don't recommend buying anything on Etsy and um yeah when it arrived it had facing on the back of it I always get um well every now and again I get people saying why do you bother stitching your fabric your tweed to this shell of netting why don't you just iron on interfacing it's um tweed has a very particular nature to it and it's absolutely beautiful that is why you would use netting and yeah putting melted glue on it just wrecks it but also trying to take off this fusible interfacing would destroy it so I'll have to work with it the way it is but I'm not happy. So the tweed is laid down flat on the workbench you can just see the fusible interfacing side and I've put down the shell and um, now I've just pinned them into place and again I just sort of mold it so that the bust fits perfectly and um, once I got the torso pieces out I used the remains of the fabric to cut out the sleeves oh so I managed to get the upper sleeves and then I did the under sleeves so I've got all the outer bits of the jacket done and then I the sleeves are relatively easy so I pinned them together ready to machine sew and I didn't have enough of that tweed to make the uh, front panels of the lining so I cut them out of a brown wool so they are ready to machine so now I have to so those were the simple bits to do so now I'm back onto the torso of the jacket and I have to hand stitch the tweed layer to the netting shell I would normally do horizontal rows because my beading rows are going to be vertical but this tweed is very distinctive, so I think I might have to do vertical lines. We shall see. All right, I'm going to go hand stitch these layers together. And once I'm done, I will be back. If you've seen a few of my videos, you know that I usually just buy one yard or one meter of fabric, depending on where in the world I buy it. And um, yeah, and you're probably wondering why there wasn't enough fabric of this tweeds are different widths so 
yeah, this because it's got these, it's more expensive to make. They tend to make them narrower. So yeah. And now the sleeves are done. I'm working on the torso of the jacket. So I just stitched the hand stitched the uh the shell, the net shell to the fronts, and then I had to do the back of the jacket. And once that's done, here we go, I've turned them over so you can see that you can't see any of the hand stitching, but you need it to be there so that the jacket won't sag and so that the two layers sit well together. So once you've done all the hand stitching, which does take forever, but it just makes the final jacket look beautiful, you lay out the back with the right side up and then you lay the left and the right front on top of it. And at the moment, I'm just stitching them together at the shoulders. Yeah, I did this at night. Sorry about the shadows, but I tried to avoid getting them. And yeah, you just pin them at the top and machine sew them. And then I pin back the, oh, <laughs> and I machine sewed the sleeves at this point too. So now I had loads of uh, hand stitching to do because you pin back the seam allowance and then you hand stitch all that seam allowance down just so that it sits nice and flat. I know on normal garments you just press it and it stays but with uh, something as bulky as this you have to hand stitch it into place and so now I just pin all the seam allowance back. You display it and then pin it like this. And then hours of fun, hand stitching. So I was just watching a movie while listening to a movie. And once it's done, you sort of hold the cuff and you carefully pull the sleeve through to the correct way. Now that the sleeves are right. We'll set them aside and I have to finish the, oh, I'm just showing you that the stripes, once the jacket's worn, they'll sort of look like they're matching. I'm still a bit upset that I couldn't do, didn't have enough fabric to do the horizontal stripe, but I don't know. I think it's going to look pretty good. So here you go. I've done the hand stitching here. And so this is the, uh, the torso of the jacket, but because the sides aren't sewn together yet, I'm able to lay it flat and just over the shoulder area, add a few more layers of the netting. So I pin them into place, then I hand stitch them at the back, at the front, and then around the shoulder areas. And it's just going to give the jacket a much smoother look and it's just going to age really nicely as well. And because I'm going to add quite a lot of weight with the beading it just makes everything look good and stay looking good even though I add considerable weight with all the beads it's like a, um, a little Ben and Jerry's pint of ice cream sometimes I add one of those of beads sometimes they add two or three so it is quite a lot of beads and um, so now I'm putting those brown bits the uh, front inside panel of the lining. I sewed them in. I also pinned the sides of the jacket together finally, machine sewed them and hand stitched the seam allowance back. Now I'm working on the neckline. I did a machine sew online or you can just measure it and, and go around and put pins in, then clip the curves, then turn it back. And now I have to go around and hand stitch this into place. I do two rows just because I don't want it coming out. Um, so yeah, I'm making the whole of the outer jacket, then I'm going to bead it, then I'm going to make the lining, well the silk parts of the lining, and I'm going to hand sew them in. It's just way easier when you're beading to make the jacket, outer jacket separately, do all the beading, then add the lining. For a while I was making the whole jacket and then sort of trying to work around the lining, but it's too frustrating and this is just easier. So now the last thing to do, now that the torso is done, is it's time to set the sleeves. So let's do this. Pin them into place, then machine sew them, then hand stitch them. Setting sleeves is a pain, but it looks so gorgeous once they're finally done. So I put pins where the notches are, just so that they're easier to find. One at the top centre, one at the bottom centre seam, and then um, the top third, uh, of the sleeve is the bit that needs to be eased in so there's usually a notch on either side of that as well so I do the bottom two thirds I do the top center bottom center then the bottom two thirds are just match for match and then the top third is the one that 
um, you have to ease in. They're not the same amount. So then I machines, after it had been pinned, I machine sewed the sleeves in, but I don't have any footage of it. So at then I did this um, sewing vlog and that's where this footage is from. Once I had machine sewn the sleeves in, the next step is to you trim down the seam allowance just under the arm by about half, no more than that. And then you push the remaining, clip the curves and push the remaining seam allowance up into the sleeves. And that just helps shapes the uh, the shoulder and then you pin it into place then I hand stitch it from the outside then I turn it inside and I hand stitch from the inside too and here we are it is finished I am kind of regretting that I went with the vertical stripes I think horizontal stripes you would have known I was trying to get the mood of an ugly sweater I mean I like it the way it is but yeah from far away you can't really um, this is, I have these pearls in that dark wine red colour and they're just strung on. That's how you buy them. They're strung on um, a bit of string. But yeah, obviously I'll take them apart and hand stitch them into the jacket. But I think they're a good colour match. Probably too similar though. I want something that's, yeah. I might mix some magenta ones with the wine red and maybe some smoky dark ones. And now I'm just showing it you from the front, the side and the back. I, I love this fabric. It doesn't photograph well because if you were up close to it, it's just so rich and textured and it's got so many colours. But if you look at it, it just sort of looks like stripy wallpaper or something it's very weird whereas it's actually this really amazing textural tweed so um yeah I think once it's beaded um you sort of often when some uh when I after I've beaded a jacket it you can see how textural it is whereas I don't know, It's. I feel like the footage isn't really picking up how gorgeous it is in real life. Also, it's. it feels like it, it looks like it's a little bit stiff at the moment because I've got those two layers of the structural layer netting underneath it because I want to do heavy beading on it. So that's, yeah, it would look prettier if I'd just done one, but because I'm going to do heavy beading, I need the two layers. So there is that as well. But yeah, and <laughs> yeah, compared to my over the top tree and my over the top gingerbread jacket, it does pale a little in comparison. But yeah, so I got out the cut glass beads as well. They're sort of a smoky black, the, the shorter strand. And yeah, they're pretty fabulous too. So anyway, that is the jacket. Thank you very much for watching. And mm, yeah, so the beading, I think I'll do sort of purple, magenta and wine and smoky black coloured. I think that'll be a gorgeous combination. Anyway, thanks again for watching and happy sewing.